and welcome to Digging History and Honoring the Sacrifice. I am your host, James McCormick, with our co-host, say your Corbett name. Perkins. <laughs> and we're here today to talk about what we do with Digging History. So today we kind of set aside a little bit of time to talk about tools of the trade. Uh, but before we get there, about 30 minutes ago, before we were uh, coming on to the end of the studio, we decided to stop and do a little digging. And in the matter of a very short period of time, um, we were able to locate some decent artifacts that are around the Charleston area. And for those of you folks that think um, that there's no Civil War history or everything's gone, um, I want you to know that these artifacts are still in the ground. And the cool thing is, <clears throat> is once we get them cleaned up and identified, you know, we're obviously going to be uh, putting these in a place where other people can enjoy them. But the first thing I want to show you is, is the kind of the bigger item. And what this is, is it's a, uh, it's a mess kit knife is what it is. And if you, if you look at it real close, you can see where, there you go. That helps a lot. There you, go. Uh, you can see where uh, it has the, where the handle used to be and there is a hole there um, I'm thinking that that just kind of rotted in there, but that's, I have found yeah, several of these. It's probably to put your handle on it. Yep, possibly yeah. so. Possibly so. Uh, or it, we could be looking at the handle. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. But this is definitely a, a knife, and it is not a knife that you would use uh, for anything other than cutting your meat with. And very common item that you would find. The other item that I want to show you is a carbine bullet. Now, this one's going to be a little harder to see. I'm going to try to zoom in just a little bit to that bullet. There we go. Now, you can see the distinct rings that are around this bullet. Okay, I'm going to move my fat fingers out of the way there and show you. This has been fired, obviously. And one of the telltale signs that this is of that period is that you see the hole in the middle. And you notice that is not something that's been... Um, so much connected to a brass cartridge, although they had brass cartridges back during the time of the Civil War. And we found another bullet, um, and this one I'm not sure of. We're going to have to get some identification on, but again, it could be a, a small pistol bullet, and again, we have the hollow chamber underneath, and it's white, which tells you that it's very old. So, you know, once that that lead has been in the ground for quite a uh, period of time, it starts to corrode and that's part of the corrosion process. Now, Corbett, we were out yesterday or the day before yesterday in St. Well, Albans. I was out yesterday too. You was out yesterday. Right. <laughs> and uh, James sat there and said 30 minutes ago, negative. Corbett was out at 7.30. 0730 in the nasty rain for you guys. So just, yeah. I and mean, Corby didn't find anything but nails and a wheat penny. You're the nail master. Oh, and, a, and a spoon. I, I take it back. A spoon. I found a spoon. Silver spoon? It was on the top, so it wasn't. <laughs> You've not been born with one in your mouth and you can't no, find one. That, I don't have that privilege card story. <laughs> Mine got lost in the mail somewhere. <laughs> So we were out in St. Albans uh, mm -hmm. a couple of days ago, and we were out there searching at a place uh, on the Coal River. And uh, what we are finding is, is, and here's the reality of digging. You are going to dig a tremendous amount of trash. Um, what we show you is not even one thirty-second of what we find on some of our digs. Next episode, though, I will bring in the whole pouch. <laughs> I'll bring in the whole pouch that I find for you guys, and you'll see. I think that me, when I when I look at this... I did find that one bullet in St. Albans, but we don't know, can't find out what it is. But if you check out the Facebook page, it's on there. Uh, well, no, it's not. Disregard, I haven't put it up there yet. But when I do put it on the Facebook page and you see it, and you can identify it, then by all means... Help me out because I can't find anything on it. Now you have a book too, don't you? Yeah, but it's it's really vague too. So I mean, it's just stuff that they've already found, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but it, as you can see, they're pulling up the Facebook page yeah. and they're showing some of our pictures and some of our posts and videos that we shoot. Um, and the U.S. that lapel pin 
the collar. Yeah, we, we still cannot really find out what cool that is thing. either. Um, and uh, it was cross rifles, and mm -hmm. it looks like it said USA on the top of it. But the U's broke, and the most of the cross rifles are, well, I don't know. I got little chunks of it, though. Mm -hmm. But it says you, it's something SA, and then it looks like cross rifles, but we're not entirely sure what that is. Mm -hmm. And then the, the pistol butt and mm -hmm. that um, firing mechanism. As you can see, some of the some of the fun. Now we find a lot of coins. We find a lot of modern coins. And why do I want to bring up the trash thing? Um, I want to bring up the trash thing because I think that for me, I've become more aware of mm -hmm. of my own. Your footprint. Uh, that's right, our footprint that we're leaving. Now it's. If we're out here looking for Civil War artifacts, or we're looking for something from the Revolutionary War, or even as, as, uh, as late as World War I when we had training camps, mm -hmm. they didn't leave a lot of trash. And if you're lucky, you'll find stuff. Whereas now, our uh, generation, we find multitudes and multi I'm just massive amounts of garbage and trash. That pop is cans, recyclable. Beer cans. beer cans, pop tabs. How much recyclable stuff do you think we dig up? Uh, I don't know. Can y'all take one of these cameras outside and go look in the bed of my truck? <laughs> I think I got about $50 worth of aluminum I can turn in. <laughs> and useless steel. And or useless iron. steel, iron. We find yeah. a lot of iron uh, and stuff. Rebar, got a lot of that. But the point is, is that we carry it out with us. Mm. And and I'm telling you, that that right there sets us apart. Now we've also found, today I found an item and I can't share it with you, but I did find an item in the woods that we are going to turn over to uh, the local police uh, department. Uh, it has a, it's a, it's a wallet and, uh, and, and it had some identification in it and we're not going to say where we found it at, but uh, when you find things like that, you know, it's important that you turn it in because it may be the missing piece for a case. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's another good reason that we're out there in the woods in the most obscure places. Um, some of the things that you have to think about when you're out there, though, is uh, besides getting permission and when you're out there looking, you're picking up your trash and you're taking it out there with you. Well, in certain areas, too, you better watch for hypodermic needles. Yeah. You know yeah. what? Let's bring that up. Yeah. We, we found have found some them needles. Them yeah. This weekend, this past weekend, and oh, my God. I never, man. And the machine will pick them up. Oh, yeah. And the machine will pick them up. And some of them that are buried, if there's a needle that's buried, you know, this is why it's very important you wear gloves. And even with a good pair of gloves, mm -hmm. you've got to be careful because, you know, if you get your hand on some needle that has been in the ground for four or five years, that doesn't yeah. mean that it's not going to hurt you. Well, see, my girls, mm -hmm. they sound off and let daddy know, hey, <laughs> don't, don't. It's on the ground, and then it's above ground. And normally, I, I'll look first before, mm -hmm. in certain areas. If mm -hmm. I'm up in the woods, up in God's country, then mm -hmm. I still watch, but I don't, I shouldn't have to be on, t on my toes looking for needles. Now down in Charleston, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, Charleston, any of the big city, any of the cities, even well, my yeah, small Well, yeah, I'm just town. talking about yeah. where we were out this last past weekend and during the week and stuff. Yeah, I was down in town. So, uh, so what? What's your? Uh, so, so what are some of the other things that we want to think about? You want to think about that. You want to think about the tools that you're taking out mm -hmm. with you. We've talked about this before about making sure you're prepared to go out into the into the woods, make sure you've got some water, make sure you've got the appropriate gear. It's starting to get cold now, um, you know, and especially, you know, as we're getting a little bit older. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> we're getting a little bit older. We, we don't realize we get really, you know, pumped up. So you've got to take care of your fitness part too. So well, always not be only that, yourself. but back to your, your clothing. Cabela's, these boots I'm wearing right now, Best mm -hmm. $40 ever. Right up here in Charleston on Quarter G. Yes, sir. $39.97. Local uh, company there, Cabela's. Water, water resistant. Nothing's waterproof. Water resistant and insulated. <laughs> and I got a pair of um, insulated overalls for 40 bucks that were on sale. Oh, so, yeah. And they're water. Those are water resistant, too. You know, I don't think anybody thinks about how much money that we put into this thing. 
I mean, it's well, an I can tell you now, my, my machine was seven hundred and twenty-two dollars minus the pinpointer and taxes. So Speaking of pinpointer, pinpointer one hundred thirty dollars. Let me talk about this pinpointer right here. So this, is, and I know it's a little bit dirty, so forgive me, but this is a Fisher F Pulse pinpointer, and this thing is awesome. Because when you go and you, you know, and I use a Fisher F75 and he uses a Garrett um, AT, AT Max. AT and Max. I use the, well, te, well, how do you say it? Technetics. Technetics. Which is made it's by made Fisher. made by Fisher, so I use the T2 Special mm -hmm. with the um, sniper, the sniper coil. And my, but my, my pinpointer is a Garrett. They call it a Garrett carrot. It's orange. Yeah, it's orange, and it beeps too much when if it sits still for a long period of time. Me, me, me. I'm saying, okay, man, I know you're here. <laughs> it's this thing is nine inches long exactly. It's got a uh, actually got a measuring device, and that's so we can measure how deep in the ground that we're finding some of these artifacts. Well, that's also. Yeah. Yeah. That's also so you don't go past that mark. That's as far as your waterproofing goes with that. Absolutely. With pinpointer. So you they're submergible, that. so. You can use them underwater, I think, up to 10 feet. I'm gonna turn this thing on. Have at it. So if we turn it on, you notice it's got a little light. It's a really cool, cool. It's kind of expensive, about 125 bucks for this. Mm -hmm. But when I start to get close to the artifact, it starts to let me know. So that way I'm not spending a lot of time out digging. So Then you don't accidentally hit your, your artifact with a shovel, which I do believe no, nah. not, I was going to blame you for that one, but no, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to go and we're going to show you a few episodes or a few uh, uh, shots of some of our digging, and then we're going to come back in the closing, talk a little bit more about some of our equipment. But in the meantime, sit back and enjoy some of the action. Tell them to roll it. Roll out. All right, folks, James McCormick here with Digging History. So I'm actually in... Uh, overlooking an area across the Ohio River. A very nice location, possible site for some uh, Civil War relics, a um, lot of Morgan's Raider activity in this area. So I'm, I'm excited about it. But we're talking about tools of the trade. So we're going to do a little bit of digging, showing you a little bit of digging. But this is primarily about tools of the trade. Now, one of the first things that I want to uh, talk to you about. And as you see, we were talking about it in the in, uh, introduction, I was talking about the pinpointer. Now, obviously this pinpointer has seen a lot of action. Oh, there it is right there. And it's gonna see a lot more action today, I hope. And the pinpointer is a very important part of your kit. And, and I like to carry this with me and I keep it in my pocket so I don't lose it. You really need to, to be careful of that. Uh, I have another one that I have that I've got a string tied to and I dummy cord it to myself so I do not lose it. The other thing is a good pair of gloves. Uh, you don't think about that, but you need a good pair of gloves. I've got a great pair of gloves here. I've got a couple of them that I wear uh, that I prefer. And, uh, and you know, you just have your own preference. The other thing, obviously, is... Uh, is your digging implement. So I have a, uh, a very nice shovel that uh, actually Corbett bought for me. Now this shovel, he can tell you about where to find this at, but this shovel cost around 40 bucks. So it's a little bit of ex an, an expense, but this has saved me a lot of time greatly. So when we dig, because a lot of times we were in somebody's yard, you know, we want to be respectful and we want to dig it out in a plug. That way we can replace it. It takes a little more time, but it's really the way that we should do that. So I like to take the plug out, set it over here on the top. We put the hole back just the way we found it. And it's like we've never been here. The other thing that you need to make sure that you have is a good machine. Now. This is my preferred machine. It is a Fisher F75, uh, and uh, it's made by Fisher Research Labs in Texas. Uh, great, great machine. I've had a lot of luck with this machine. 
Uh, I've got a little bit of tennis elbow going on here from swinging it too much with the right arm. I think one of the things that I'm going to do is, is get a piece of Velcro to tape over the back of this so that it's not just, so I don't have to hold it up so much sometimes because uh, I use this a lot. The machine itself is not hard to use, but you have to get used to it. You have to understand, you know, where the search coil is at and basically at what point over the search coil that you actually start to find your artifacts. Now, there's a little dot right here in the middle of this, and I have found that whenever that little dot is over and it beeps when that dot, that's generally where your artifact is at. But that's not always the case. Sometimes you find it in this general vicinity of this search coil, but that's why you got the pinpointer. The pinpointer really helps you out a lot. And I set this thing uh, to about an 85 uh, whenever we're looking at sensitivity and discrimination. I usually discriminate out um, quite a bit of stuff, usually up to uh, about a 25. And some people will disagree with me on that, but this is what works for me. And, and you just have to test it out. And once you get a machine, whether it's, it's this or whether it's any of the other wonderful products that they make, a bounty hunter works real well. You saw the video of my daughter using the little kids detector. She found a Civil War button with that thing, okay? And she is, and well, she's, she's found a pocket knife and a ring and all kinds of other stuff that she's found eight years old and she's killing it with this kid's metal detector. So you don't have to go spend eight, nine hundred dollars on a machine. You just have to get something that works for you and you got to have fun at it. Okay. So if you're not having fun at it, then there's no sense in even going out here at all. Hey James. Yeah. What'd you find? I found your grenade. A grenade? Yeah. What the heck? <laughs> He found a grenade. No joke. Good find, Rich. He found a grenade. <laughs> hey, kids, you want a hand grenade? <laughs> it's a toy grenade, of course. It's plastic. We were having a little fun with that, so please don't think we're playing with live hand grenades. The other thing is I pack a backpack, and in this backpack, I have... Uh, you know, a little first aid kit. I have water. I have a lot of my camera equipment that I carry with me. A snack, I always talk about that. You know, it's important to have those things. Um, a little emergency blanket is in here. In case you fall, you gotta spend the night in the woods. Hey, you might wanna make sure that you have something to keep you warm. The temperatures are dipping down below freezing now. So it is, it is a tough situation. So I'm gonna throw on my backpack while I'm doing that. All right, not too heavy. Then I have another little pouch right here that I hang on my side. And in this pouch is where I put my artifacts and relics that I find. Uh, usually if I find a coin, I put it in my pocket because I don't want to lose it. Um, and then, and then, besides getting permission and knowing you're in the right spot, I always, I always send somebody a link. Uh, I usually text them a link to my exact location where I went into the woods. That way, if you come up missing, they know where to go look for you. And that is very important. Uh, my wife wants to know where I'm at. Your loved ones want to know where you're at. Don't just take off into the woods. Use that little device on your cell phone. Pull up Google Maps, and it says send your location. It sends an exact location where you're at, and you can actually let them track you. And then that helps because when you get back from that trip, then you can see where you walked and, and you'll be surprised how many times you walk in circle after circle after circle in the woods. And those are important things to know before you go out into the woods and go digging. Folks at Digging History and Honoring the sac Sacrifice, Corbett Perkins and I absolutely make safety a priority anytime that we do anything. And we want you to do the same thing too. So go out and have a good time, get off the couch, get to digging, but above all things, be safe and be responsible all the time. Hey, have a great day. Bless each and every one of you all, and let's get to digging. What's the most important tool to have out here? Your brain. Now, if you look around, you can see that the sun's starting to come down. I know that it took me about 30 minutes to get out here, and I've got roughly 30 minutes 
maybe 45 minutes before it gets dark. Always leave yourself a buffer. Never come out in the woods and get so far lost and so far gone that you don't know your way back. Always, always let somebody know where you're at. So the next tool of the trade, the brain. The brain is the most important tool of this trade. Use it, use it effectively and use it wisely. And look around you. You know, I mean, I like to do cross country metal detecting. A lot of people don't like to do that, but I literally go through the woods cross country. I found a really cool ax probably from uh, the late 1700s. It is very, very old. Um, I found a flat button. I've never found a flat button out here before. So that is late 1700s, early 1800s possibly. But I've stumbled onto uh, probably a decent site. Didn't have much time to get out here and look around, but I'll definitely come back. And you can mark that on your Google Maps. So use the apps that you have on your phone to make your search even more effective. And above all things, fill your holes, respect the property owners, and pick up all the trash that you see. People definitely appreciate that. Remember I told you that we've become very aware of, of littering? Folks, th there's no sense in this. Uh, everywhere we go, we find a place like this, you know, where there is so much trash that is dumped out. That is the most irresponsible and disrespectful thing that you can do. So if you know anybody that does this, on a regular basis, put an end to it, put a stop to it, pick the trash up, put it where it belongs, which is in a receptacle. I'm looking down here, there's probably $10 worth of recyclable stuff right there. 10 bucks doesn't sound like a lot, but I'll tell you what, it would be much better than having it right here where it's at now. This is kind of what we do out here. We've come out here and you can see we brought trash bags and some cleaning implements and and we have found some really cool items here. So we've decided to clean the area up a little bit, trim out some of the underbrush. And this is really good to do this, remove all the trash that we can get. Uh, I've been through this area several times, but now that I've got it cleaned up a little bit, removed about six inches of the, the, uh, the brush, I'm starting to find some things. So let's take a look at it. Let's see if we can get down in the hole. That's it. Do you see it? Do you see it? That's it, baby. I think he's found a Civil War button. Yep, there it is. There's the well, eagle right that? there. Look to your left about, right here's where I found the, found the button. Right there, yeah, yeah. that tree. That's the honey hole right there. I'm gonna... That's a cuff button. So that's off of a cup link. Right. Let's get back to digging. You can't find it sitting on the couch, guys. Got to oh. get up. Well, just remember I found two bullets. I found one of the um, buck and ball, and then I found a pistol bullet just up above me. So, And it was facing this way, so they were shooting down. Yeah, this area right here is a pretty good area. I'm going to try to swing maybe around. Well, I'm going to try to yeah. swing up here high well, I'm going to come up towards you there a little ways here in a minute. I'd say you'll find a couple dozen buttons, and, and uh, you may find that that other stuff there okay folks and into another great day with digging history out here got out of the woods a little bit before 5 30 still not dark about 15 minutes from the house right now so i'm heading back home to the greatest treasure that i've ever have or could have found or could have and that is my family remember that folks spend time with your family Engage in this hobby. It is a wonderful hobby. It's a lot of fun, especially you veterans that are doing this for therapeutic value. You will find a lot of happiness. You'll be able to just turn off all of the BS and the nonsense in your life when you come out here and you get in the woods and you start finding artifacts. And even if you don't find anything, you know what? It's really cool to get out and exercise. You can get out, you can lose weight, get healthy, get that blood pressure down, get the, all of those numbers right. You know what I mean? Because the best thing you can do is keep yourself healthy and keep yourself alive and keep yourself engaged in the game. Remember, folks, don't let the enemy win. Many of you have survived some very traumatic events in your life, in the military, in life in general. Don't let depression get you down. Get out and have a good time. Come digging with us at Digging History. 
All right. So I hope you enjoyed what you were watching. We, we definitely uh, enjoy what we're doing. Sometimes making those videos is, are a little bit tough, though, aren't they? Yeah, because sometimes, like today, I've been up since 7.30 this morning out here in this nasty rain and only found one wheat penny, a spoon, and a bunch of junk. So I didn't film, didn't film anything for today. Well, as of yet, I gotta go get my kids and then we're gonna be going back out here because my son, my kid, get your kids That's involved it. because my kids love it. I mean, Brendan is more of the your cameraman kind of guy because mm -hmm. uh, James got to witness that. I gave him the T2 and the little turd. He got a little bit frustrated because James was finding all the coins and he I put him on that coin site. Well, I I got him some. I was like, dig right there, dude, that's a coin. And, and then he was okay. And then he got bored because he wanted to do the cameraman stuff. I was like, well, okay. And he's but, shot some great video. He, he's really interested in the whole production, editing mm -hmm. and stuff. But just get your kids out, whether they want a metal detect or not, okay. I'm going to get him a camera. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to go find him a, a cheap camcorder or something that's a, an HD or a 4K or a, I, we're thinking about getting him a, a cell phone. So mm -hmm. um, he starts middle school next year, so he's going to have to have one anyway. Mm -hmm. So he can, I mean, get get everybody off the couch and go. Go out and be a dirt pirate. You can, join, you can join our crew. <laughs> we our, take people out all the time. I'll and we're, we're willing to to bring you and your family out and show you the joys of metal detecting, relic hunting, and, and also to spend a little time with your family is a good thing to do. This builds the positive relationships that we like to see and we need to improve on. So with that being said, folks, we are here with Digging History to bring you history live and as best as we can so that you have an opportunity to see and in some cases touch a little piece of history that are in most cases older than the state of West Virginia. So before we go, we want to say thank you to all of the wonderful folks at the West Virginia Library Channel and to all of the folks that have assisted us, the veterans, and to Beth Garrigal, you are definitely invaluable. And to Fisher Labs, thank you for your support with the technology and the material that you provide us. And to each and every one of you that are out there, remember that a day out digging beats a day on the couch anytime. So have a wonderful and great day. Thank you.